Howdy Gosslers. None of this has bugger all to do with what we're making today. But who cares, eh? I'll nick one of the wife's beers because she didn't buy me any beer this week and I ain't got any beer. But I might have to go on wine because we've only got one beer. We're actually going Greek tonight. We're making a soup. A classic. I'll say a classic, a traditional Greek soup, which ain't actually originally from Greece. Although the Greeks might not like that, me saying that. We are gonna make Afghan Lemino soup. What's that then you ask? Well, it's in the name. Afghan Lemino basically means egg lemon. We're making an egg lemon soup. Whoopie bloody do! Now, before we get started on what everything is and what this soup is, I need to get me broth on the boil. Now, I'm going to put it in the back burner because you can't see my raw what I'm doing here, which actually might be an advantage. I don't know. So, in here, it's a big pot. It's some freshly made chicken stock from scratch. Okay? About three litres, still a little bit warm. So I'm gonna put this on the back burner there. Well, you can't really see it. When I finish doing a prep, I might move it forward to give you a treat so you can see the side of the shiny thing. Um, what we're gonna do, without if I turn the white one on, wouldn't it? I'm gonna put that on low. If it's gonna stay on, little bastard. There we go. And so I'm just going to take that lid off for now, so I can see what's going on. And we want to bring that up to the boil. So, egg lemon soup. Well, it's obviously got lemons in it, and it's got eggs in it. Well, actually, it's a chicken soup. A lemony chicken soup. The eggs do something to it. They do something to it to make it creamy. We don't put cream in this soup so we're making a creamy soup but without cream oops almost that the empty bloody glass in bloody idiot so while that's coming up to the boil we'll uh, look at the other ingredients so while i tell you a bit about avoca lemon o soup uh, we're going to start preparing some lemon juice so i've got four ish La well, I mean, four largish, not foolish, four largish lemons. Actually, I want sort of three to four, but we're gonna have four because that one's a bit smaller. Um, and that's gonna go and make it a bit tangy. So, and we'll do it through a sieve because obviously we don't want all the crap in it, do we? We don't want all the pips. So, this after lemon soup. Well, actually, uh, it's a sort of um, a family of sauces and soups and that have egg yolk, or in this case, egg yolk and egg white, and lemon juice. And it's not just exclusive to Greece. It's also found um, sort of all over the Balkans, um, Jewish, Sephardic Jewish. Communities, we're going to come back to them. Um, oh, I don't think we're right. Uh, Turkey, uh, Arabian countries, like I say, Greece as well. Um, and although, like I said, it's sort of considered a Greek dish, Greek traditional dish, it actually has its origins with Sephardic Jews. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the Sephardic right. Might be Sephardic, I don't know. Um, Sephardic, that's S-E-P-H-A-R-D-I-C. Um, who, at that time, were on the Iberian Peninsula, Spain. And it is them that created this sauce, which was the forerunner of 
Afka Lemino. So at that time, they didn't call it Afka Lemino. Okay, at that time, it was more of a sort of thickening sauce to go with other dishes. And, oh, probably going to get this pronunciation wrong, Agristada, I think it was, they called it. And it would be added as like a sauce, a sourish sauce, to these, well it could be meat dishes, roast meat dishes, veg, veg things, um, it could be a sauce for um, things like domades type things, okay. Um, and it was created by this Jewish community to get round strict kosher dietary rules, which at certain times, I don't think it was all the time, but at certain times forbade them to use um, dairy products. So they came up, they devised a sauce. So it got quite satisfied about that. Doing this, I mean. Um, they devised this sauce that would allow them to replicate using stuff like cream and that in their sauces. I'm going to have to wash my hands because they're going to drip everywhere. And I can't pick my beer up because I don't want to get uh, slipping out my hands. So while I've got lemon juice everywhere, and now I've washed all my hands to get rid of the lemon juice, I'm now going to take another lemon and I'm just going to make some thin slices. These are going to be uh, like for decoration, if you like. So I'll keep that. The wife might want that to go in her G&Ts. So I was saying that they produce this sort of sour sauce, but the other reason that they made this was because they needed this thickening agent, which was the eggs. Now, going back to the sour bit, um, in the Middle Ages, um, they would use something called verjuice, which is where they took unripe grapes and pressed them and used the juice. Can you hear that pan expanding? The food's talking to me. I need more drink. Um, so yeah, they would take this un, um, unripe grapes, press them, and this would give them like a sour juice. And they use that in various ingredients. Romans used it. I know I just said Middle Ages, but um, I think the Romans used it. Um, and it was at that time the only way, or one of the only ways, they could get a sour ingredient until around about the 15th century when lemons were becoming more available around the Mediterranean and everybody thought, well hang on, these lemons, they give us a sour thing. And so lemons took over as the main sour ingredient. So we've done our lemon juice. We've got some slices of lemon for decoration. The only other ingredients you're going to want is some chicken. So this is some chicken cooked earlier. I went into broth actually. Um, mainly the white meat, a little bit of the brown meat there. And we're going to be using that, not as it is at the minute. Um, you're going to want, getting on for 200 grams of long grain rice. Uh, this is basmati rice because I've got a fucking very big bag of it. Um, though I must admit I've got rid of most of it. And three eggs. And that will be it. And obviously some more beer. I'm now going to prepare my chicken. So I'm just basically going to break this up, or cut it up, um, into smaller pieces. Okay, um, this is making a lot of soup by the way. I know they might look like a lot of chicken if two people. Well, they ain't nearly. Um, but, you know, three litres odd of soup there. It's a lot of soup. Now, I said to you, the Sephardic Jews in the Iberian Peninsula created this Agristrada, I think it was, uh, this sauce. But then, unfortunately, along came 
the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. So, they got booted out. But they took their recipes, including the one for Agostrada with them. And, you know, they settled in various places, a lot of it in the Ottoman Empire. Hence, Agostrada came to Greece and Turkey. Now, the old Ottomans were quite partial to their sour dishes. And they would often make dishes using things like sour plums, pomegranates, or I've never really thought pomegranate was sour, um, and other fruits like that. I thought that was a bit of a manky end bit, a bit of a um, And so, they obviously took a liking for this agrostrado. It sort of fitted right in um, with what they liked. Ooh, try top thing with Last bit cut there, mate. That's coming up to the boil. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to get the bits of them chicken on there. We're going to have a little bit of a clean up, and then we're going to put the rice into there. And are you right up there, darling? Do you need another beer or anything? Oh, get me another beer. Oh, shit, there's only two left in the fridge. Will you be staying on beer tonight, darling? Uh, no. I think I'll finish on beer. Second, there's the other beer down here now. <laughs> Just give me board a bit of clean. Wash it out. That's it. Just don't want to me board. Thanks, Mr. and Mrs. J. I've used this before. You might not have seen it, but it's laying down. That's the thing. Anyway. We're now going to chuck that rice into there Ooh. and we're going to give it a stir and we're now just going to let that cook for about 20 minutes. Okay, every now and again giving it a little stir, just make sure everything's all right. Stay. Put the drip all down, so I'm in kettle now. Um, so, um, ah. Uh, Agrostrada has now oh, an empty glass again. Has now moved, like I say, out into like the Ottoman Empire, and over the centuries, it morphed into Avgalemino. And Avgalemino, essentially, without like the stuff like the chicken, and that if you just looked at the eggs and lemon, that was just used to thicken stews and soups and actually going back to our Avgalemino Avgale, Avgale, Avgale soup that we're making you can actually make this thicker or thinner as you want so you can make it more like a soup or you can make it more like a stew if you want it a bit thicker put a bit more rice in it for instance so really now we're at a stage where there's not much we can do. Oh, I didn't put my timer on, did I? Let's get my timer on. So I said about 20 minutes to cook that rice. Go. Um, our chicken's chopped, our lemon juice is ready. We've got our lemon uh, slices ready. The only thing we've got to do is prepare our eggs. Now, we are gonna separate our eggs in a minute. Not gonna do it too soon um, because we want to whisk up the whites and just like when you make a meringue what do you have to avoid two things two things two things water and grease now given that earlier they seem to be making that chicken stock with remnants of um chicken fat anyway i've given me bowl and me whisker degrease with some um i was gonna say surgical spirit uh, a white vinegar all right is what I mean um, but we're going to separate them three eggs into yolks and whites and we're going to whisk up them whites and then we're going to whisk in the egg yolks in with it and when you chuck it into your soup it goes Whoa! looks horrible to begin with but it will then thicken that soup so
I might move that onto the front burner actually because that back burner is a bit fierce. And I really want a gentle simmer and that's that's more like a rolling boil. Getting bored sitting and waiting for this. I've got bugger all else to do. So I'm gonna boil ya. So there's a Greek meatball dish where the meatballs are cooked in like a liquid and they have uh, have they add avga avga lemono. Can't I can't tell it word now about a beer. Um to thicken it so it's a thicker sauce with the meatballs. Um, there's a, um, I think a magrugista or something soup. Again, another Greek uh, soup um, that's made you, with like a lamb offal and stuff like that. Um, and that often is served to break the fast of the Lent period. Again, thickened with Avga lemono. So, you know, it became sort of quite widespread. If it was used as a soup like we are, you typically would add orzo, rice, or tapioca, something like that. Obviously to make it a bit more than just a thickening agent. You don't just want to be eating a thickening agent, do you? Um, and like I say, you can make it like a stew, you can make it quite thick, or you can make it just more like a broth. Totally up to you. And normally, if you can do it with a soup, you would normally add into it the meat or the vegetables from the broth you made it from. So if you chicken broth, you put chicken back in it, vegetable broth, put vegetables back in it. Up to you. So, really, that's just about it. So this all comes about because of the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Okay, so, rice is sort of more or less cooked, don't matter, because we can carry on cooking a bit longer yet. Okay, so that's had 20 odd minutes. It's actually had 25 because I went to carry on watching, I'm re-watching the entire Walking Dead series. I haven't seen the, the last half of the last series, if you like. I decided to bugger that and going right back again. And I thought, I'm stood here looking at this, boring you. And I haven't really got much more tally to bore you anymore. I oh, know, I'll go back, because I can't watch it, the wife won't bloody watch it, I don't respond to the woman. So she's soaking upstairs, so I thought, bugger that, but I got sucked in. So I'll give it the next five minutes. And now, I'm gonna take that chicken, and we're gonna put that chicken in there. Now, I don't know if you know, well, you probably didn't know, so I didn't show you. It is still very much a broth. Okay, it's not very thick at all. So anyway, we're gonna stir that chicken in there. I'm going to keep that because we now want to start preparing our thickening agent. Now, sometimes they use the whole egg and whisk it up with lemon juice and chuck that in. Sometimes they do it the way we're going to do it. We're going to whisk up the egg whites and then whisk the egg yolks in, chuck that in there, and then put the egg, uh, then stir in the lemon juice. Um, either way, it ends up with eggs and lemon going into that okay now that chicken has been on the side for a little bit it had been in the fridge beforehand so it's obviously going to need a little bit of warming up but it is cooked okay and that bloody selfish wife of mine decided like i told you earlier um she's gonna only have a couple of cans of the four pack that she bought herself but she didn't say oh no i'll only have one you can have three Oh no, she had two. So I'm on the wine now. And keeping in the theme of nothing like what I'm doing, drinking or whatever, it's got a bugger all to do with the Greek soup. This is Australian. This is Australian Shiraz. Shiraz, yellow tail. Discovered we've got quite a lot of bottles of that. Anyway, so we're going to let it cook through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my eggs. So I've got my whisk attachment there. 
Okay, you can fit my hand if you like, if you're a bloody moron. Okay, so I've temporarily moved that to the back burner so you can see me make an arse of these eggs. Now I've done two of them. Uh, they were very white shelled eggs we've had. Don't ignore me, they're sort of a bit of a brown. And I noticed that first one was almost like a bloody uh, terrapin egg. Leathery, very soft. So I'm just going to so uh, soften. See, it's got softened on the brain now. Um, I'm just going to separate the eggs, uh, the whites from the oats. Okay. Um, big, whoops, there we go. Bit of white here. Yolk in that one, probably not a good idea, but never mind. We're not making them rain, so I hope that'll be all right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just now going to whisk up these whites till we get some soft peaks. This has got four settings and a turbo. They're all fucking turbo. So as you can see now, I've got some nice soft peaks. So now this is where, even though that was on setting one, you are now going to gently whisk in the egg dough. Now you might ask, why did Maddy Bobber separate them? Now, to make sure the whites are nice and fluffy. So, that's now nicely punching like a bloody missile in my oven. Bad enough with a bloody chicken bopping over it. Um, so, that's now got that done. So I'm just going to get this moved out of the way. So we've got our whipped up eggs, we've got our lemon juice, you're going to want some salt and some pepper. And I'm now going to move that back to the front burner so you can see a little bit more what's going on. Don't want you missing out on the excitement, even though you won't see what's going on in there anyway. We take our beaten egg mixture and what we're now going to do is we're going to gradually stir that in. Now, doesn't look very appetizing, I can tell you, as it goes in there. But what's going to happen is this whipped up eggs and the starch from the rice that we've added is going to help create a nice emulsion. And this is going to help start to create a thickening effect. Now at the moment it is sort of getting a bit more frothy in there um, which is what it should do but that will die down I mean I don't know if you can see but so let's just get the remainder of that egg into there and we're just going to stir that through okay so we've still got it on a low heat and if you get with it does sort of almost look like a curdled effect okay um, but that will change as it starts to break down now now I've got all the egg in there even though at the moment it's still you know don't look much we're now going to take that lemon juice and we're now going to start stirring that in Like I said to you, I've been watching Walking Dead from the beginning again. The wife is binge watching Benidorm again. This will be about the 15th time she's been to watch Benidorm. Oh, I don't know, this ain't not right with the woman. So, we want to get this all stirred in. And like I say, um, to begin with, it does look a bit foamy, but that foam will subside. So we're going to give it about 15 minutes, not critical. Okay, but we're going to add some freshly ground salt. And we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper at this point. Okay, 
and if you want near the end you know when we're getting ready to eat the thing you can add a bit more pepper add a bit more salt it's up to you but essentially we've now sort of almost made our avgo lemono we just need to cook through this egg um, now ideally as well as decorating our bowls with some slices of lemon you would also add some fresh oregano which is typically a greek herb which we've added to the stock when we made it okay but i don't have any fresh oregano wrong. okay um and instantly this foam is now starting to become much more sort of lumpy so it's starting to disintegrate and like i say we're now getting a bit of a chemical reaction going on in there um, where the soup should start getting thicker we want to do that like i say for about 15 minutes until it no longer looks like this sort of funny sort of curdled top on it again you can't see it really properly can you there you go um so what you want to serve we're just going to have it as soup you could have it with some bread if you wanted we ain't ready bad very nice but the wife says it um it's up to you so i'm just going to keep that going um i can reduce the stirring in a little bit i'm bloody going to because i need a bloody drink okay but it does want quite regular stirring just to help get that egg all mixed in right so we're about halfway through that final sort of cook off if you like most of like the foaminess has subsided see what's a bit funny uh, but what we're going to do is just see if we need any more seasoning bear in mind it's going to be fucking off Mm. Chickeny, lemony. Can't taste the egg. Well, well, I, I bloody can't. So, chicken and egg. But I think I'm going to add a little bit more salt. Right, so we're going to add a little bit more salt. Add a little bit more salt. And I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. And that will be our final seasoning. And then I'm just going to carry on doing what I was doing, stirring and watching for about another five odd minutes or so. And then we'll be ready to serve up. Okay, the sauce has got thicker. It's not got like thick, thick, thick. Um, but it has definitely thickened up from what it was before. Um, I suspect possibly... I don't know, it depends on how you don't want your soup, does it? I mean, it's quite chunky with the uh, chicken. Um, if I avoid a bit of the chicken, it's still very soupy. It's meant to be a soup, not a stew, but there you go. Anyway, we okay, go, like enough five minutes and then we can serve it. Got me bowl, got me ladle. So, you, you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, um, but adding them eggs, has certainly not only just thickened it but it changed the colour so where it was sort of that little sort of browny colour from the chicken broth adding them egg whites was changing it oh got me garnish got me garnish okay if it's not lemony enough it is going to be now so Let's try and get a bit of rice, bit of broth, bit of chicken, burn the top of my mouth off. It's chicken soup with lemon in it. Bloody nice. The rice is slightly mushy. Which is partly what's intended but even all that lemon juice it's still not 
too lemony. Okay, got a big bit of chicken in it. Oh, having a big bit of burnt me bloody bad now. But there you go. There is your Greek Afka Lemono soup, courtesy of Sephardic Jews and the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition.